Do you know who I am? Thriller. City. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check us out. Hey, Turn it right now. Let this shit seep in. JackThriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. Do you know who I am? Okay. And we back. Y'all give it up for yourselves, man. Yeah. All right, New Jack Thriller City, man. Yo, we got a crazy show today, man. But before I go right into that and everything, yo, T-Rex, what's up with you, man? How you feeling, bro? I'm feeling All right, it's time to take over the world again. OK. All right, so you know you know the drill, T-Rex, man. I'm finna know what I'm saying, file off these, uh, the co-hosts for the day, my co-pilots and whatnot, man. Uh, after I do that, you know you, you got to give them their flowers. You, know, you got to give it up to them. All right, so you know. I gotta give up to my cousin first, my, my blood cousin, man, uh, the godfather of the crank movement. Y'all give it up for Lil Playboy. What up, what up, what up? Yeah. Oh, I got my homegirl in here, man. One thing about it podcast, uh, Money Talks. Uh, my other homegirl, she in the house and whatnot, got her own radio station, TKO Radio. Y'all give it up for Chelsea Speaks. And you know what? I, I met these two really cool girls last night, man, over at uh, Ugly Money Meets You, um, the Trigger uh, Alert show. And um, you know, one of them, uh, she got a little, little, little bitty, little bitty uh, booty, big titties. And one <laughs> of them got small titties and a big booty, and whatnot. They sisters. Wherever she go, she go, and whatnot. Uh, what's your name, young lady? Caitlin. Kate? Oh, yeah, I was, last night I was calling her Caitlin Thinner. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your sister's name? I go by Ash the Gas. Ash the Gas. And Ash is a rapper. Yeah. She a rapper. And, you know, we got another rapper on here today and whatnot. This is one of my player partners, one of the kings of crunk and whatnot. We go back about 20 years ago. You know what I'm saying? My favorite Atlanta. This is where Atlanta was. Atlanta, back in some freak Nick shit going on before <laughs> all the snap movements and all that other shit, man. Uh, he hails from, I just heard, Talberton, Georgia. <laughs> I didn't even know that shit was even existed. I thought he didn't made it up at first. <laughs> they say the, uh, uh, money, what, what they say it is? The, the, the population. The population. It's like less than a thousand. Less real than a small, thousand. Real small. <laughs> real small. Okay. Y'all give it up for Bo Hagen. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I? I'm Bo Hagen. <laughs> Do you know who I am? <laughs> who am I? Hey, yo. Hey. Come hey. on, Bo Hagen. I just want to say, man, thanks for having me here. I'm happy to be here, man. With bruh. my with my with my long lost big homie. You know what I'm saying? Man? Bruh, bruh. Hey, let me tell you something. I listen to you every day in the gym on treadmill. Every day, I listen to Bo Hagen. Say, get crunk, get them calories out. Got to get the calories out, bro. <laughs> Come on, man, crunk calories. Good crunk for calories. Come on, baby. <laughs> what you been up to, man? Hey, man, you know, just, just lifing. You know what I'm saying? Just lifing, man. Um, you know, I still do my shows and, and I do seen my you on, music. I seen you online. But, you know, I'm just trying to evolve. You know, you can't be a 60-year-old rapper just jump around on stage. So I, I, go, I go do my shows, and then I go, you know, I um you know I mess around in transportation industry. Uh, me and my lady got a turnkey business. You know, you grown we, man. You got got your lady. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Grown so man. We, shit. We, Ain't we, no more hoes. We get them apartments right for you know God what I'm saying. Damn. So that's like my side hustle. God damn. So okay. you know what I'm saying. You just, you, you gotta, invested right. Yeah, man. You gotta have money coming in from five different ways. Man. Okay. At least. You at sound least. like Chelsea. Hello. At okay. least. <laughs> I can dig it. I can eat Chelsea. Speaking yeah. to you, go ahead, get in there. Listen, so you have had a lot of success, but most of your success started around the age of 27 mm -hmm. with when you had Uh Huh and it sold over 500,000 units, numbers that we do not see at all anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How was that feeling for you to be at such a young age and experience such a great amount of success? It's a blessing and a curse because it's like, it's, it's, um, it happens so early, so you you expect things to be in that same realm. But like with the music industry, it's hit or miss. 
you 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 might shake them dice, roll them the first time. You mm -hmm. know, you might crap out. You might you might hit your number. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, but once you hit, you got to learn to get up from the table. Yeah. Or take your take your winnings and put them to the side, mm -hmm. and then go play, go sit at another table. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but it was a blessing, man. Yeah. It was a blessing, like to to because I met John and like I met John at 18. Yeah, you were young, you know but you studied saying? under here for a while. And then the success came like five, six, seven, eight years later. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So you don't never know when it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But when it's when it happens, you just got to be ready for it. What is it that kept you locked in with Lil John? Because a lot of these artists nowadays, they don't believe in putting in the hard work. They want that microwave success. What is it that kept you, your hand to the plow through all that? Just the process. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing that. Like where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? Jack said it best, like where I'm from, it's, it's a small town, about a thousand people. Mm -hmm. So here I am plugged in in a city with one of the biggest movements. So it's like, you know, I wanted to stay, I wanted to stay um, in that situation. But at the same time, you know, I had talent that could let me go move around and do my own thing. Mm -hmm. But I was like, let's see what this, you know, this little John ship, let's see where we can get it to go, you mm -hmm. know? And it took off, and <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I'd be sitting up there and looking at the ship with everybody else, you know. Wow. But, you know, it's a blessing, and I'm proud of them. I'm happy for them. Do you think that coming from such a small town really, like, pushed you to be like, nah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Like, <laughs> I want to be big. Like, I'm not doing this shit with y'all. Yeah, yeah. They say, um, they say in a small town you got two types of people. They say you got the people who, who stay there and never leave. Then you got the people who leave and never, and never come back. Come so mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I was kind of like a mixture of that. You know what I'm saying? I represented my town, but at the same time, I knew it it, it wasn't no opportunity opportunities there in South Georgia. You know yeah. I mean? As far as music, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you know any other artists that do music out of the area? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We actually... Uh, Man, shout them country-ass niggas out. <laughs> but, but, you cousin him. Yeah. But you, you know, but no, 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 no. no. That's your cousin, no. Man. Like, You're the first artist I know from there, but you the first person I know from them, period. But yeah, know, it, it's real. ironic, Did though. Did you stop the game? It's ironic, though, because in my, in my little small town, we've had three um, artists that had nationwide exposure. Mm -hmm. The first one, and he's the one that kind of inspired me to rap. His name is KD. Um, KB, you, you know him with Calhoun. He was signed to rap a lot. Okay. He had the song with uh with Devin the dude. Um, mm -hmm. No use in the saving these. Oh, uh, let's show them what they was it made for. Now like, you tell us. <laughs> you know that was um. So he's like a OG. You know what I'm saying? So it's him. Um, and then we had. Hold a, on, do that shit again. Uh, no use in saving. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's that. Devin the dude song. <laughs> No use in us saving these hoes. Let's show them what they pussy made for. That was the song. <laughs> that was the song that KB it. and Devin had. I love it. But KB is, is like, he, he's my OG, you know what I'm saying? So he was an inspiration for me. And then, then I came along. And then after me, it was a little chick called Lady that. Uh, Lady. Yeah, that Plies brother, Big Gate sign. Yeah, yeah, Big Gate, okay. So she had had some song called Yankin or, or, or something, but um, but yeah, in our little small town, you know they, what I'm they, saying? They, she came from out of there? Yeah, yeah, she from she from our town, okay, lady. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, we don't have you know, we um, it's a small little little black town. So it's small? like like oh. we got the same <laughs> the same shit that go on in like a urban neighborhood. It's like it's just rural. You know what I'm saying? It's just a small concentration of hood shit. It's like, you know it's like gang yeah. violence in the little town. Yeah, yeah. They 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 drilling. Drill music has taken over the world. So they spinning down in my in my little area too. You know, I got a question. I've seen a lot of people in the industry. How you stay looking so good? Cause you know the music industry can wear and tear on your body and your spirit. So what's been your secret ingredient in just being able to sustain in the industry? You got to detach. I don't take this shit serious. Wow. Wow. <laughs> like, That's I don't heavy. take myself serious. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like, I'll, I'll, I can laugh at myself. I can let, you know what I'm saying? Mm. A lot of people, they get caught up in the the, the, the crowd. Mm -hmm. Like the crowd. Once the crowd stop clapping for you, they, they go lose. crazy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But before I rap, I played football. Really? So what position? Like, I was running back, part return, okay. kick out returner. So 
at 10, 11, I, you know, I already, I already heard the crowd scream. Mm -hmm. So, so you, when you the crowd scream with music, it didn't affect me like that. Mm -hmm. But if that's your first time that the crowd screams for you, is when you on stage. You gonna oh, know. Oh, but you, uh, you, uh, <laughs> you outside with it. in the back, you, uh, <laughs> tell on whoever just to just keep to that going. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's what drives a lot of them. A lot of them people. Mm -hmm. so I feel like that's the, that's the culture right now. Like, um, I think like rappers nowadays, the the fame is so short lived for them. They don't invest their money right. They all lend. They doing it. I feel like rappers back in the day, it was like their job and they loved it. Like it was their passion. But like you said, like you were like detached from it. You know, rappers now like they live in it or yeah. like they want to live it. They yeah. want to do the drugs. They want to. And I'm just like. How are you going to keep going with this? Like, yeah, yeah. it don't make no sense. In yeah. 2008, you did an interview and you called the music industry an assembly line. Yeah, yeah, because it it changed. Um, like, when I started in the industry versus what the industry has turned into, uh, versus what it turned into while I was actually, you know, knee deep in it, um, it started to, to get to the part to where Okay, who the hottest producer? You put put him with the hottest producer. Who who sang the hooks? Get them to get them to sing the hooks. Mm -hmm. So it'd be it'd be a different rapper, but they got the same formula. For you know, that's like yeah. team model for you know that's what I'm saying? Sounding all the same. Exactly. So yeah. but you know, whatever works for them. But I love music. And even with the style too, right? And the and the uh, clothes. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because we got a we got a whole little thing over here we call school clothes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, Bo Hagen, if you don't mind, let me show you how it go real quick. Uh, uh, Playboy, yes, show sir. me your school clothes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Show me school clothes. Cool real time. Quick. Oh. Tell them what you got on. Oh. Yo, this is something light, man. I got on these uh shenanigans. This uh if you don't know about that, that's Chanel, Chanel sneakers. We call them the Chanel I got on these vintage seven jeans. Uh, I got this, the Beatles t-shirt, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a whole lot of ice, just some icy shit. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> hey, that's how we doing it today. Something really cool, but yeah. still it hold its weight. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Chelsea, can you show me your school clothes? Oh, sure. Love my black clothing brand. So the skirt is from Shop 11.9. Top is from H&M. My brand is Women Are Dope. And y'all know the sneakers stay on go. All right. <laughs> Amani, show me your school glow. Okay, let me get up real quick. Yeah, all right now, sure. That, that, okay. Hey. So let's see. Sneakers are, you know, real comfortable New Balance. I got these jeans from Pretty Little Thing. The top I actually got from, um, I was at Five Dogs album release party, his posthumous album. I met his family, real nice, like it was, it was real crazy. So this t-shirt was for free, I got it at his album release party. And then this jacket, I think like, shoot, I wanna say like Forever 21, I think. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Boy, hey, mm. show him your school clothes. <laughs> hey, man, come hey. on. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Casual, just move around. Okay. Hey, yo, Ash Gang. Hey. <laughs> what you got, sir? Yeah. I wanted to ask you, um, you know, you started off with like the uh, the bass going into the crunk, and then even in the snap. That's a couple of generations, man, yeah. and a lot of eras that a lot of artists ain't able to do. Yeah. What made you or what helped you be able to maintain 
and go through each one of those eras? Well, it's like the base um, era, that was how I had to get in the game. Because see, it's like, um, see, like a lot of people, they, they think I, I kind of started with John, but I actually, um, I was more, um, I started with some of Left Eye's producers. Get out of here. So um, Left Eye had a producer named Michael Anthony. He was producing for Black. So, um, you know, dealing with him introduced me to another one of the Left Irish producers uh, that was from South Georgia. So he and I linked up, you know, real hard. He's the one that introduced me to John. John was an A&R at So So Deaf. Mm -hmm. So they was doing the Bass All Stars album. So when he heard me say I sounded like a rapper in Martin Luther King. <laughs> so, yeah. so I was like, well, shit, I don't hear it, but hey, if that's what it is, let's go with it. And um, so he wanted to put me on that album. Um, but I had to do like a regular uh, rap. And then he took it and put a booty shake beat to it. So Luke Skywalker had a um, producer that I did. I did a regular um, song. They took the beat off the song, and then he put one of those Miami bass beats. You know, Miami bass yeah. is fifty percent faster than my uh, Atlanta bass music. Like Atlanta bass music is it's going fast, but Miami bass music like two hundred BPM. Uh, yeah. BPM so, mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying? Like she said, the album went gold. Yeah. You know, I bought me a Cadillac off of it. Okay. You know, okay. so you got some of the funniest shit <laughs> on uh, on Lil Jon albums and whatnot. Yeah, man. What was that uh, that one? Where the nigga kept on goddamn, you was trying to get rid of him. <laughs> he trying to get out to get out the phone. Yeah, skip. trying to get off the phone with a nigga, and he just won't go. He got a guy. One more thing. <laughs> and one more thing. Hey, what's that shit you said? Yeah, yeah, man, get out the phone. <laughs> hey, man, what he said? Expect a phone call from me. I will hit you back tomorrow sometime. But yeah, man. Um. And like that skit, like believe it or not, like, and that's something that I look back, you know, over time. I feel like that skit, it planted a seed, you know what I'm saying? Because in the South, we weren't really doing skits. No, no, not really. And, and like that, that skit, it was an audio skit, though. And like to look now and just see all of them, they do the visual skit. And to see where that shit gone, boy, I, just, I sit back like a, a proud uncle. Great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I knew that I had something to digest. You know, they successes, they success. Mm -hmm. But I had a little, I sprinkled a little drop of mm -hmm. the seed or something that led to that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so that's a blessing in itself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, they call you the country ghetto poet. So one of the one things about your platform You've always felt like the streets needed a narrative. Yeah. Why did you? What was it that happened, in maybe your your upbringing that caused you to be like, you know what? Somebody needs to talk for the streets. Because I felt like I felt like music is a soundtrack for life, mm. and like right now, it's only like a soundtrack for the weekend, mm. and it's like <laughs> nobody talking about Monday on your way to work. Yeah. How you feeling? You after know what church, I'm saying? Sunday uh, music like you after make. church, yeah. Sunday, uh, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody making the music for the other days of the week. Mm -hmm. It's just we finna ball and turn up. And that trap, ain't life. Trap open. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, what you do after you done took a loss in the trap? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and it's like we gotta have music for all of the moments in life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we just making one type of music. That's true. Speaking on, uh, sorry. Well, speaking on writing music, uh, a lot of people didn't know that you wrote the hook "Damn" for mm -hmm. the Young Blood. Mm. Yeah. Um, if you don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You wrote that? Wow. Yeah. Get out of here. I well, say that shit all the time. It was a lot came yeah. behind. Your residual chance. That's, a, that's a every day. <laughs> what? That's one of those every day. That's not no weekend. That's an no, every that's day mentality. Yeah. 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 So I see exactly what you're saying when you said that. Yeah. What was you coming from when you, you said that you did, this was an actual situation came out of that? Something happened, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a lot <laughs> behind that hook. Nigga, because you don't give a damn. We, we don't, don't give, give a, a fuck. fuck. So we so we on the <laughs> same <laughs> level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't give a damn and I don't give a fuck, we kind of like equally equal. equally yoked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything can happen. Yeah, it, it could go either way. <laughs> you know wow. what I mean? Word. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, um, that song, it went number one. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ever see it, it'll say, it'll have me on there as a writer. Like, it won't say featuring Bohagan. Mm -hmm. 
And like that's kind of like where the um, money we had. No, no, I get I get paid off of it. I know you get that. I wanted the credit. Then. I wanted the credit more than the goddamn money oh. because I could have took the credit and made more money. Mm. They were just like, no, huh? Get your ten percent, like hush money. But we ain't gonna put you on that. Let you know what I'm so saying? That's your, Why is he that's your actual what? voice on the hook? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Wow. Because what it was, I was supposed to lay the scratch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Sean Paul was supposed to come back and lay his um, voice over the hook. Over it. Okay. So that's how I left the studio. So uh, Memphis, uh, y'all know Memphis. Mm, yep, Memphis yep, was yeah, like the, yeah. He was the nigga that you sent to the store to get, get the CD to get the cigarettes or the cigarello. <laughs> the new one. Yeah. He was yeah. the new one. So uh, I didn't say that. Pretty much. Pretty <laughs> much. No, but listen, listen to me though. But listen to me. Shout out, shout out, Memphis though. <laughs> Memphis came up from that shit because yeah. yeah, he was the one took the song back to the label. Like, look, we got a hit. Yeah. So he being the fact they call that a tastemaker. Yeah. Okay. So whenever yeah. you the first one take it back to the label and say, look, we got a hit. This something, mm. and then that shit actually become a hit. Yeah. Okay, now that's how he got his deal. Yeah. That that led to the Huey, uh, like a helicopter, yeah. the K machine, mm -hmm. all that shit came off that song. Wow, yeah. off the clout that he got because he took that song. Even back some to the cheesy lab. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Niggas didn't like he, he. He was like that bridge for a lot yeah. of mm -hmm. yeah. down south uh, artists and everything to get their deals. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, like that that hook, it was it was a it was a lot that came behind that hook. So wait, what happened? Like you left the studio yeah, and then like what happened? Like you it's a little gray area right there. Oh yeah, it was, you know, and I'm gonna go ahead and throw it out there. That's my brother, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like me and Sean Paul got the fighting behind it and there <laughs> like we got out in the yard and For real? and form a circle <laughs> 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 and got out there and knocked and everything because <laughs> because they had me thinking leading up to the was video. The yeah, I ain't gonna throw bro under the bus. I mean, I will say, uh, throw him under the bus, man. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we'll, anyway. we'll just say, you know, we'll just say, um, he didn't win. Just, you, you we'll win just say, yeah, you would just say that. You know okay. what I'm saying? But um, but it's all he love. Yeah. You he know, like, hey, Sean Paul, Paul, that, 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 that my, that yeah. my, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it was one of those situations where they was telling me that you gonna be able to say your hook. Mm -hmm. You know, once I heard it and yeah. I heard it on the radio, I'm like, damn. That's still me on there. So I called her like, bro, y'all didn't take me off the off the hook. He was like, no, nah, we gonna um, we your voice sound better on that. So we gonna we gonna just leave it like that. So that's when I was like, uh, yeah, y'all gonna let me say my hook in the video. Yeah. And Leading up to the video, like let's just, let's just say the video <laughs> next week. So I call, hey, bro, like um, uh, y'all still gonna let me say my part <laughs> in the video? But I had been around video shoots, so I knew that somebody was supposed to call you, get your clothes. Your call sheet. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, your call sheet. Ain't on. nobody called me, got hey, my shit. Come on, yo, go ahead. So you I know. called a nigga like okay. the, the two days before, hey, bro, y'all gonna still let me, uh, yeah, yeah. So get to the day of the video shoot. Okay. I just went to the mall. That's when the new Vic, the new Falcon jersey. Yeah. I yeah. went and bought yeah. me. I bought the new J's, okay. the Vic jersey. I was like, boy, nigga ain't gonna be able to say nothing. I'm already fresh. Don't need no. Uh. Yeah. Get to the video shoot and uh, so we doing a couple. Uh, we doing a couple shots. They got me up there saying, it. and then all of a sudden, a little intern come and say, uh, yeah, JD say. Um, he don't want nobody out here but uh Lil John and and the, and the East Side Boys and the Young Bloods. So I look around I'm like shit. I'm the only one that ain't. <laughs> oh my god! Shit. Wow! I'm the only one that he could just say, hey, he don't want you on stage. Mm -hmm. But I had to go to him and say, Young Bloods. <laughs> Shit, I'm the only one that ain't what Man, you just said. JD dissed you, bro. Wow. And I had I, I had done got money with JD. You gotta think, yeah. I came from so so there. Yeah. JD. So they just like, bro. JD. Mm. Come on, we bro. need answers. Hey, man, you know. Come on, bro. But th this ain't to throw JD on the no, table. JD no. might have had some shit Fuck going. <laughs> JD. We okay. got to talk, my boy. This is about the third time I've heard you done did some fuck shit now. <laughs> mm. I'm just bullshitting. I'm just playing with JD. I still need you to come to the show. <laughs> but Sorry. yeah, so, um, but yeah, you know, so, so once he did that, I got in my feelings. I, I called my lawyer because you got to think. 
the song is number one in Atlanta on the radio at right. this point. Yeah. Yeah. Dang, we ain't did the paperwork or shit. You the know money, what I'm saying? The money going somewhere, but ain't And you. you ain't gonna let me say my part in the video, <laughs> so I let that mother call my life. Look, I charge them just extra. <laughs> just, just tell them I want to exactly. give me 30000 uh, Like, I just, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So about a week passed. So then I get the call. Oh, curse your ass, nigga. You said you got goddamn that up. We going to beat you up. We going to do this, da, da, da. I'm like, okay, bro. So if you don't give a damn. So then that's Sean Paul. <laughs> so then J-Bo called. Oh, man, we going to I'm like, bro, I'm right around the car. Y'all know where I'm at. J-Bo. Wow. Come on, bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at this point, you know, I done been threatened. So it's like. So I'm just standing. I'm standing in the window with the scrap with two clips. <laughs> just, like, I'm ready. ready to sit down. I'm ready. Like, okay, nigga, don't threaten me. It's whatever. So um, hell no, shout it. Through the course of it, uh, because I started out with with Eddie Crew. You show understand enough, me? So enough. like, they we all family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But it just at that point, you know, we had to get some training. Yeah. So um, Sean Paul, big cousin, pretty kid. He mysteriously come through. I guess Trey had told him what going on. Sure enough. So he was just like, yeah, man, well, y'all just Trey. fight. Yeah, he was like, man, y'all just fight. <laughs> and I put my scrap up. <laughs> so I hear, I hide my scrap downstairs. I'll, you know, probably about 15, 20 minutes later, they pull up. Two cars deep. I'll come out the shirt. We out there in the yard. <laughs> First thing this nigga do, pull out his strap. Bonds just like, oh, oh no. shit. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. <laughs> like, Your cousin talked me into putting my strap wow. up. And, me, nigga, and you pull out yours. So we, you know, we tussle. He, um, they get the strap from him. But, you know, I don't want to just tell the details of the fight, but just, just say, yeah. you know, yeah. I only lost probably about one or two fights in my career. And that was the first two. You know, oh, right? the first two. <laughs> so let's just, you know, we'll just keep it like that. But you know, it's it's love, it's fame. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? That's respect, though, because y'all yeah. fought. You know, yeah. like now yeah, that it wouldn't have happened the same and way. And it's exactly. love, no. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I don't, it ain't no hard feelings or no right. shit. But sure it just, I have to tell my truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the next man it's tell his truth, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got to speak. And if my truth cut through your truth, hey. Yeah. It is what it is. How it common is truth that? Truth hurt, huh? How common is that 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 happens? Like somebody sing a hook, don't get the credit, like they didn't get their money. Like is that that common that that happens in the music industry? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'll switch and work for hire. <laughs> They'll switch and say, look, they just paid you to um to do the hook. You know, like um people mm -hmm. who come through and like play instruments, mm -hmm. yeah. they'll get them on some work for hire shit. We just paid you a thousand dollars just to play that look. Tune, yeah. And now we own that tune. Mm -hmm. So it's just all about having your paperwork and taking care of your business. And you That's had true. yours. Yeah, well, I had them in a um I had them in a spot because they had released the song. The song was doing numbers and they hadn't did the paperwork. Oh, so in, in that yeah. situation, well, that I could just say, hey, door, give me maybe. whatever. Yeah. And you gotta make it work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. you got yeah. you wanna yeah. catch yeah. up with the song. Yeah. You feel me? So you gotta heard this story before. So it's like that happens a lot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's 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 a cold. That, game. That's how that young Jock song was. It going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you, you got your own hair run coming out. <laughs> no, I don't have my own hair run. Why was I leaning in? Like, oh, okay, then. Yeah, <laughs> hair run is it's, it's kind of like a copy already copyright. Okay, like, oh, yeah, gotcha. from God. Somebody invented that already. Okay. Yeah, God, God, okay. God made the poppy plant, so gotcha. he got hair on. <laughs> But I'm I'm working on a um a series called Heron Heroin Wars over in Birmingham with my partner Quest and Real Records. So it's six episodes, you know what I'm saying? It should be drop dropping um uh, in the next couple of weeks, you know. So y'all check that out. Be on the lookout for me, man. I'll get my acting on. What was okay. the inspiration? Um I just I just wanted to evolve. I just wanna um, you know, like I said, like you can't do music forever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And at some point, you got to get out of the kids way. You know what I'm saying? And, and you have to figure out how can I still be in this game mm -hmm. but not just be sitting in the kids way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. old artists they you, you see a lot of live shows with live bands and you know oh, what I'm saying or or they start acting and 
if I act, I can still do music occasionally. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a it's like a part time hobby type thing. Mm-hmm. You know, weren't you signed to um, Bad Boy at one point? I was not. That's then that's the second time I done heard really? that before. Like, I wasn't signed to them. Um, I was just I was I was signed to TVT for a little minute. You know, I done some work with So So Def, Warner Brothers. Um, so we we um, probably did some work with them, but I wasn't ever. Really Which is one sign to them, okay. I have a question for you. So, with the whole YSL young thing, young thug thing going on, and a lot of people talking about rappers and their lyrics, mm-hmm. you coming from a history of really speaking your truth in your lyrics. You don't give a damn. We don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Do you think that it's grounds to hold a, a rapper's lyrics against them? It's like it, it's it's. What they call it, uh, inner t- uh, creative license. So mm-hmm. it's like what happened, what changed is we went from writing to freestyle. Mm-hmm. And when you freestyle, you just pretty much talking about some shit you just, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, you talking yeah, about you what you just did. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so it's like that's a gray area mm-hmm. in it to the point where, yeah, they shouldn't hold their lyrics against them. But. We are we all know if you don't write that shit down, you just freestyling what you did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, and shout out to Thug. I hope he get himself, you know, I hope he's come out of that. Mm -hmm. But um So what's your overall take on the music music industry as it is? Because now we got the sexy reds, we got and of course music has changed, but you knowing music theory behind Mm -hmm. the composition, putting hooks together, how to build an album, what do you think about the music industry now? Because we hardly get albums anymore. Yeah, yeah. See, the the music industry as we know it, it uh, it's, it died. It's officially mm-hmm. gone. Cause see, what happened is, back in my era, they went to the stores and bought tapes, CDs. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, they they cut that out. Mm-hmm. It's no tapes, you know, no CD stores. They switched and went to streaming. And what streaming is is basically um, ad money. So it's like if you look at a, a title, YouTube, whatever it is that the song playing on, they selling something around it. Mm. The the platform is getting that money from the ads mm-hmm. and then just breaking off whatever oh, song is mm-hmm. playing a point zero 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 zero. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like the music industry just tied into the ad money. Mm-hmm. It's it, and if a song play fifteen hundred times, that's an album sale. Yeah. They don't even have to go buy that shit. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So like when you be seeing such and such got a billion streams and this, this, and those cool. are album sales now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It ain't about nobody just buying your your tape. Like right. people don't do that no more. They just listen to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like that's what changed about it. So now the record labels, they don't really give a fuck about the talent. They just want who going to drive the most traffic. Mm. So whatever, whoever acting the fool, mm. that's who they want. Mm-hmm. They want whoever, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. just out there making noise or just doing whatever that get people's attention. So mm-hmm. it's like a microwave yeah. type of uh, time now. Definitely. Speaking of um, streaming, right, how you said we switched over to the streaming world, I was looking at some of your uh, songs online, mm-hmm. uh, and I noticed that sometimes they got your name spelled different. Uh, is that like was on your behalf or the label behalf or was you changing your name? Was you trying to get your royalties back? Like what mm-hmm. made the name yeah. change? Excellent question. That's good. Yeah. Go yeah. different. See, um, and you know, that's the part, the business part of the game. It's like where um it was a period in my career where after I wrote the hook for Dan, I signed a pub deal thinking they were gonna let me write for other people. But really, I, you know, as time went on, I realized they tricked me into signing the pub deal no. to get that little part of my no. publishing no. to sell <laughs> to sell to somebody no. else. I was like, oh shit, the fix is in. Yeah, yeah. But um, so that might have something to do with that. You know what I'm saying? So like, like um, I signed my pub deal with EMI Blackwood. Mm. I know y'all always hear about Michael Jackson on the Beatles publishing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's called Sony ATV. Yeah. Michael Jackson bought my publishing after he had died. <laughs> so, wow. I like, so I would get my checks. I'm like, damn, Sony ATV. He uh Sony ATV bought EMI Blackwood. 
but I think that's what they they already knew that was gonna happen. So they tricked me with the hey man, you know, we're gonna get you the right for somebody else, da da da. Flying me out to Cali, Big John got me out, got you in the Maybach wow. riding around. Yeah, like, they gave you where the I home. sign it. Tell me where I sign it right mm -hmm. now. And the big city. Well, <laughs> but that's the game, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It, it's, <laughs> it's it's finessing that shit, bro. And that and a lot of times like they will put a song, it'll be my song, and it'll have John name on it, or it'll have Scrappy now, or Tree of I'm like, bro, y'all can't be this smart over here, and then some shit like, like that just have my yeah. shit. You you're not you either smart or you stupid. We won. <laughs> you what know? do you think up, up and coming artists can do to protect themselves from having situations like that happen to them? Um. See, like nowadays, they sign you to the 360, which mm. and I ain't gonna sit here and say 360 is the worst shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they get in the, they get in the. If you ain't got shit going on. Get yeah, yeah. <laughs> get your yeah, check. Sign that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, a lot of time when they sign that 360, they don't have they they likeness no more. Yeah. So like, say for instance, you sign to somebody in a 360, you want to leave it, you gotta change your name. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be a whole nother artist or mm -hmm. whatever. So I think um Nigga told me I couldn't be honey bun no more, bro. So I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so you gonna change it to cinnamon, but I'm a cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, like yeah, that that shit crazy because that's that's what gonna happen is going into the future. That's what you'll see. Yeah, when people try to leave they the label or something, they gotta change their whole shit, and then they gotta build their brand back up. Mm -hmm. So unless you in a good situation where somebody can help you build your brand back up right quick, right quick, then you know. Is, do you think it's? You oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, you think it's just like the artist's desperation, like they just want something, so they'll take anything. Cause I'm just like, bad deal's been going on for so long. Like, when are we gonna wise up and be like, let me have somebody look at this? But not everybody has the money for a lawyer to look at things. You know, right. that I feel like it's, you know, they definitely take advantage, but it's just like, okay, at, at some point, it's just like, y'all need to wise up about what's going on. Like, right. you just signing, you ain't even looking. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And, and every artist, they, you know, 99% of them, feel like I'm going to wrap my way out of whatever bad yeah. situation, you know? They feel yeah, like I'm just going to wrap my way. I'm going to muscle five. up and goddamn. I mean, 20 years <laughs> after my 20th album, uh -huh. it'll be all over. That's what Young Thug said. He was yeah. like, you know, I signed the most effed up deal in the world, but he was like, I had a, I had a plan for yeah. it. But it's yeah. just like, you'll never know what's going to happen. And he, he is the 1% that, the one that, that can, you exactly. know, like, That's the exception. That's yeah. not the rule. Yeah, he is the 1%, like, you know, and um, most of them, you know, it's not going to happen for us. And, mm, but yeah. in our heart of hearts, all every artist feel like shit. I'm just gonna keep jamming and keep jamming and keep jamming. Uh, Sooner or later, they gonna get this shit right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm and kidding. it never happens. Yeah, <laughs> well, do you yeah. think it's an age to stop rapping? I think I, like it's I think it's an age to start. Okay. I think mm -hmm. I think you okay. can't you okay. can't yeah. be 50 years old starting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like like okay. in my I like case, that. in I like my that. case, I like I signed my first deal at 18. Mm -hmm. So it's like I came in it as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's a license for me to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. But now if I had to just, at my age now, just saying, hey, I'm finna be the hottest new rapper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, got, mm -hmm. I, got, I got 16, son. You oh, know what I'm saying? Oh. Like, it's not give it up work. for old yeah. hanging. <laughs> 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 so what you think, 35, 35 to cut off to start? Right. Like, let's be real. He old, no uh, albums how old was Two Chains when he started? He was a little nah, he bit. Started, he didn't he start. Started, yeah, yeah. yeah. He but he was Titty Boy. Okay, okay, okay. See, you say Two Chains. He was but Titty Boy. Like, he was Titty Boy. Titty Boy. Yeah, yeah. Titty Boy started way back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He switched it and did it. You know, when he did the Two, two Chains thing. So, um, yeah, if you already here, then yeah, it, it, you, you good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, that's just like uh, uh, West Side Gunner and, and Benny the Butcher, they in their 40s, yeah, but they been booming in their city. Uh, for the long for the past for 20 years. But they started you see what early. I'm they started early. But so we didn't they know can Benny keep the butcher 20 years ago, but mm. everybody in Buffalo did. You see what I'm saying? So it's not yeah. like, oh, he just blew up at 39. Right, right. B right. Benny the Butcher was on my uh 16 or better. Right. This back when, when he used to that? just go by Benny. 
Yeah, and, right. I, and I didn't know that this nigga, if I'd have known that nigga was going to blow up, I would have signed the shit out of that nigga. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, you know you had me there, but you don't see that the back of the back Yeah. I'm like, for real? They showed me that shit? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Home alone face. Yeah. <laughs> Because you gotta look at it, it's a letter. It's a letter at the bottom is us, at the very top is the Jews. Now you're gonna have you gonna have one or two um people that look like us that gonna get kind of close up there to them and they gonna see the shit that they doing. So then they gonna be like, you know, bullshit roll down here. So then they gonna do the shit to us that that they see the Jews do to them. So it's like this shit been always happening, but like back in the day it would happen with the old soul singers or the blues singers and shit like that. But like now, it's like different ones of us are getting closer up the totem pole and they seeing the slick shit. Mm. Like how like how uh, they, they steal your publishing after people die. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Your kids don't know where to go get that shit. They just let it sit for about 15 years. and wow. when, when ain't nobody looking, they just go grab your publishing because you you done died off. Your kids don't know how to go get it. Hey, fuck no. <laughs> Bro, the, the closest thing that we had is the shit that Hollywood just did mm. because the first strike happened about two years ago. I, I want to say a year or two years ago. See, the one that just um, got finished is the actor mm -hmm. and the writers. Yeah. But the one before that, like a year or two years ago, it was about once they came out of that shit, my royalty checks went up like 25%. You know what I'm saying? Because some kind of way they made them pay more for royalties. Mm. So every time, and like this strike right now, once they come off of that, the when you you know you do an independent movie or whatever, once they it keep playing the streaming money for the movie, it's gonna go up. Because that's what the actors was tripping like shit. It you should know, play on Netflix and again no and all this. Mm -hmm. I'm getting twenty dollar checks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mother Matt gave me goddamn a million to right. do the movie. Why am I getting the twenty dollar check? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And that's what they going through. So once that shit over with, streaming royalties gonna go up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it's starting with the uh, with the movies, but it's gonna move over to music too. Because streaming is streaming. I was just going to say, because artificial intelligence is taking over, and there was a bit of a, you know, decapital, uh, debacle. They're scared of that shit. They're man. still going through that. What do you think about that? Because a lot of artists may not be able to push out music because of artificial intelligence. It's, it's um like I seen something like, like um, DLC. Like, DLC used to be one of my favorite rappers. Like, and I seen where DLC, you know, because he had the accident and it messed up his vocal mm -hmm. cords. And he's about to do an album with AI. Wow. And I was like, wow, that's that's cold. You know wow. what I'm saying? He get AI to rap in the place of how he used to rap. I'm, I would appreciate that because I write definitely that? don't want him to do it in the voice he got. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Huh. Is he, he, gonna gonna write it? he probably gonna he probably no, gonna write it and yeah. get AI to say it or yeah. some so shit. Yeah. Write. So if that's a case where AI we Was benefit to, from yeah. AI. But now the other case is like she like you got the damn right down. Hey, Drake do a song with Jay Z and mm -hmm. and the AI got damn do the song, write it, the lyrics and it mix that bitch down, everything. You on a bitch? And see, good. that's what they scared of. Mm. You know. I think it's gonna be a good thing though, man. You and we just gotta adapt with the times and stuff, you know. I and think I, that's I think scary. It just comes with just uh you know having a good lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nick Cannon just said that you know you just got a lawyer all the way up. And just be on top of your P's and Q's, and, man. And get you an AI lawyer. No, nah, for, <laughs> for, for real, for real, for real, for real. Sometimes these lawyers, sometimes these lawyers actually work with the labels. Mm. They be owners of the labels, co-owners of labels. Stocking it. And you think you signing something that's good for you, and your lawyer got your back, but really, you signing something that's good for that label. You're it's totally just benefiting right. them. Totally it's not right. even for you. You totally, yeah. you totally yeah, right. Yeah, but that's because you need to go. You need to go into the label with your own lawyer. Mm -hmm. You don't go get the, the label. You don't get the lawyer that they give you. Hey, yeah, man, we got uh, uh, Benny Hill right here. For <laughs> no, you. <laughs> you and you, yeah. he said he's gonna yeah. give you a good <laughs> price. Uh -uh. <laughs> you gonna be, yeah. you definitely gonna get some kickback. <laughs> <laughs> a kickback right up your ass. <laughs> 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 bring 
your own <laughs> nigga. Yeah. yeah. That's what you got to do. It yeah. is what it is, man. And, you know, just to go back to something that y'all was talking about earlier with signing bad deals, people, you know, I would advise people that if you can, it's hard to tell somebody what not to do mm. when they rent due and mm -hmm. when they live. Exactly. That's all they've been doing is chasing a Surviving. dream. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, saying they got this opportunity in their face. Because like you just said, you could be part of the 1%. Yeah. But it, th that comes with, um, you know, having knowledge of the game, yeah. being a one-stop shop, learning how to uh, uh, um, edit your own videos, shoot yep. your own videos, write your stuff, learn and get, get getting uh, business, music business for dummies and all that other yep. shit. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? And that's how you can kind of counteract that if you ain't got no money up front. Right, yeah. right. You know, and you just you do the best you can because, you know, these deals don't be happening every day. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what I was yeah. going to say, too. Like, it's very hard for black people when you're trying to do something that only 1% of us are going to do to be like, oh, let's come together, y'all. Like, it's, cra it's crab in a barrel because only a certain amount of us are going to make it anyway, and then they don't want people to come up and snatch the opportunity. So I think it's very much, you know, people don't really want to help because they like, nigga, I barely got it myself. Like, I'm just trying to feed my family, you know? I think that's the mentality a lot of rappers have. Yeah, 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 yeah you're right. Who you got to get yours and I got to get mine. Yeah. And we got to stop bringing our cousins from the barbecue to the table to, yeah. you know, to do those business deals. Everybody can't do a LeBron and keep your cousin with you, so you got to step away from. So for you, is there anything, after knowing all that you've been through, is there anything in your journey that you would do differently? Um, you brought your strap to that fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably, yeah, I probably would have. Um, but um, I don't know, man, um, because the way my career went, I had to stop to scrounge for everything. Like I didn't have a- Tell them what scrounge uh, mean. That's, 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 that's way deeper than deep and deep. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, just, just, just think like- it's some slave shit. I, <laughs> like when I came in the game, it's like, I knew if I didn't do that with So So Def on that base All-Star album, mm -hmm. that I probably wouldn't have got in the game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I knew that that was an entry point. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I went in to, through um, bass music, but I knew that wasn't my shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So people know me from crunk. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then I released my single in the snap era. Mm -hmm. but what's happening? What's up? Yeah. So it's just like, you know, you just you just got to roll with it. Yeah. Just, you yeah. know, it's it's water. You know what I'm saying? Your hustle got to be water. It got, you know, whatever you pour water in, it takes shape of that. You add you add heat to it, it steam up. You add cold to it, it turn hard. You know what I'm saying? So your hustle got to be water. Another dope era of your career was the um, the Georgia Dirt era. Mm -hmm. Do you think you guys will ever do a reunion? Yeah, yeah, that's fa that's family. You know what I'm saying? Um, what is this stuff? Shout out to Playboy Trey, um, Little Body Big Mouth, Looney T, um, my bro Quack, um, uh, Mr. Ward. Like, you know, that's family. You know what I'm saying? That's when. When I seen that the BME ship was, was <laughs> I, when I seen it taking on water, <laughs> that's when I that's when I put the whole George Dirt movement together. I was like, okay, oh, I got I, I got to yeah, make yeah, me yeah. a lifeboat somewhere. Yeah, okay. I got to make me a raft. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and you still got your BME sh short chain? No, nah, no, nah, it's you gone. You pouring the shit out of your mama? <laughs> 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 it gone, it gone, it gone, Jack. Word. Yeah, it gone. What you do with it? Because I, I just you gave it. Like you did. You got pissed off and threw your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my moments. I had my moments where, um, you know, where I was mad at my situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know that that. You that, pulled a Muhammad Ali, bro. Yeah. I know. I, I did the throw it, just throw it in the woods type. Thing. You did it in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever? Go I just got outside the expressway and just threw it. Like fuck oh, this shit. Oh, just in a random. <laughs> yeah. Place. Like, oh wow. Yeah. It. it I went through some ups and downs with that, oh, you know. Man. But like I said, they, they still fam, man. Yeah. It's love, you know. It's just, it's just like when you go through the struggle, yeah. and then you 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 carrying them on your shoulders, you lifting them. Then once they get to the part to take off, and it's just like, all right, thank you, mm -hmm. and it's just like shit, you know. When get crunk, we were supposed to uh, do the video for get crunk. John fell out, like they had approved the video, everything. Then he fell out with TVT. They sued him, he sued them, he, uh, they went to court, he moved to California, That that's how it ended. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. It's just like, well shit bro, we finna. What about us? What, hell? And you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it went, 
a couple years before I seen him again. And then after that, it was just all Mexicans and white people around. It's just like, man, this ain't what we were, you know? Mm-hmm. Shouts out to the Mexicans and the white people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Much love. Give them their love, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't what we were doing, mm-hmm. you know? And, you know, when the, when it changes, it's like, okay, it's over with. It's over with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So what do you feel like Bro, it's over with? Give, give me one single or song. <laughs> yeah, damn. Yeah. Do me a beat and, and then you go on about your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And see, yeah. like, and, and people always like, will always wonder, like, what was my grudge? And like, my grudge with John was, it's like, bro, why we was grinding? You always told me, like, do this, and then we gonna got down, we gonna do your project next, boy. We finna got down, you know what I'm saying? And they always kept backload me, backload me, and then you take off, and then it. <laughs> We did, he did that with um with Dam, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He could have told him, man, look, man, he did the hook. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then when it came to get crunk, he did the same thing again. Mm-hmm. And then your partner, like all the rest of I met John first. I ain't meet the other folks from BME. Mm-hmm. Then it's like your partner come trick me into signing this pub oh, deal yeah, and all this yeah. shit. And now you just hiding, bro. <laughs> like, bro, right. look in my face, talk to me, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? Him, you be like, I ain't really, I never saw him. You never wow. seen him? He's a, he a voice, man. I see, and I seen him someplace. Um, and it's just like, he go through all these different emotions. In three seconds, he go through five different emotions. Hey, Absolutely. ooh, what you drink? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, bro, it's like, bro, I, I got love for you, bro. Hell like, no, you, know, like, like, like <laughs> you trying to see what kind of shit I'm on. Yeah. Like, bro, give me a hug, bro. Yeah. Like, God damn, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's all love, but I just felt like, I felt like niggas fumbled my career accidentally on purpose. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Fuck with a career. Yeah. yeah. God damn. You know what I'm saying? Like that's Presidently. how I, I, yeah. probably, I feel about it. You know, but at the same time, it's like, like get crunk got critical acclaim. Mm-hmm. And when I say critical acclaim, that's like everywhere you go, mother like, boy, that's very good as hell. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I go to Cali, boy, that bird right there, good as yeah. hell. All you know what I'm saying? Your so verses was them verses, nigga. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and and it's like with. So it's like with that, it allowed me to do sh- like I, I don't do as big a shows or as all the rest of these motherfuckers mm-hmm. or whatever. But I consistently over twenty five years uh, done did shows. Mm-hmm. They gonna call me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. they gonna keep on calling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we finna get you on all our shows over yeah, here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm word, here. Word, word. <laughs> hey, my one of my favorite songs. I can't. The, the, the hook go. My phone is tapped, and so is it's my the living, living room. room. We can't hide the money. Here. We, need, we a need a bigger, bigger room. room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you say, uh, goddamn, Dro be watching. I be watching Lean on Me. And Dro be watching Purple, Purple Rain. Rain. <laughs> What's your favorite scene out of Lean on Me? Oh, uh, when he take him up on the roof. <laughs> when he take him yeah. up Do on the roof. Do you smoke crack? <laughs> yeah. Do you smoke crack? <laughs> Do you smoke crack? You know we smoke crack, don't you? Stop, <laughs> <Yeah>, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Joe Club, man. We hey, need, I didn't know that was Epic. a real nigga, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Jersey. Yeah, New Jersey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Jersey. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We crazy. need more we need more Joe Club. Mm-hmm. Man, 2023, bro. Don't do it. <laughs> Joe, Joe Claude just need a bulletproof bed. Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah, 100 percent man. What is the what's the name of that song? It's on Lil Scrappy. Album. Uh, Ben a Boss on on Scrappy. Ben Ben Boss. Me, Scrappy, and Dro. Yep. Yes. Dro, and take, yeah. Take Dro. us out to that. <laughs> Dro, Dro okay. went off. And you know this. Well, I'm gonna give you your flowers. I feel like we need to just give you your flowers right now because I feel like you have not been appreciated. Hey man, thank you, know. you, thank you, thank you, man. Um, it, it's just it's a journey, man, and it's like, like I said, I don't take myself too serious with this, mm-hmm. with this shit. Like I um. I, I knew it was bigger than me. Like mm-hmm. my first time writing a rap and somebody was like, boy, you you got some. I knew it was bigger than me. Mm-hmm. I knew that I had the talent. So I wanted to um, do it for my area where I'm from to inspire the next generation. Mm-hmm. Of, you can, it, it might not be rap, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it is that you want to do, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? And now mm-hmm. like we got cats that doing all kind of shit from down there. Oh, like, wow. you know, and they success is they success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, I just wanted to inspire, you know what I'm saying? 100%, yeah. You know, and, and I look at it like, shit, I 
came I saw, I conquered as mm -hmm. far as that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And my journey is not over. Right. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And and like like even when I was doing it back then, I felt like I felt like my music would age well. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I felt I felt, wow. I felt like wow. I feel like yeah. nigga right now just not catching up to my old you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some of my old rap. Yeah. It don't your shit don't sound stupid, right? It's a bunch of shit sound dumb. <laughs> yeah. Like I, can't, like, yeah. I, I used to listen to the shit. I go back yeah. and listen to some no limit shit, but I was like, I, yeah. I should have heard Peter <laughs> had that mixed down. I should I should have heard that one. Yeah, yeah, them ad yeah. libs one on mm -hmm. one right. Longevity is worth way more than being hot for two, three years and yeah. then nobody even know. Yeah, so kudos to you. Yeah, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Man. So what's next for Bohagen? I mean, I know we got heroin. You know, you got to cut your businesses. Is there anything on your personal bucket list that Bohagen wants to do? I'm gonna get back. In, I'm gonna get back into the um, lab. Okay. Um, Hagenomics. Okay. You know that that's my um. You need some skits. Huh. You need some skits. Something. Yeah, yeah, I, boy, I would love it. I would love it. And um, just you know, I'm gonna just try to keep going. Reaganomics, I got thing. it. Like Reaganomics. <laughs> it's like it kicked well, in. It kicked yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. That was a delay. The delay. <laughs> the delay. The delay. Delay, but not denied. Yeah, yeah. So that's my um, that's my next um project. I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm working on. Man, I'm just just taking it one day at a time. Uh, John them actually reached out to me about the V103, the uh, the V103 show that they doing next month. Uh, the, uh, the the 50th anniversary. Yeah, so hopefully if I ain't said nothing too bad and then. <laughs> but hey, hey, if it be... hey, listen, he was just playing. Yeah, we just joking, bro. We <laughs> on that goddamn show, John. Stop playing. So yeah, man. So I just just keep pushing. You know what I'm saying, like and. And I just love music. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to make it. Like, mm -hmm. new music come out, I listen to it. Who's the new niggas you listen to right now? Right. You know, the little, um, the, yeah, I'm telling you what, because I moved to um, Birmingham. Okay. Oh, for real? So, I be listening like that. Hold on, you, you drove here from Birmingham? Yeah, I drove from Birmingham. Oh, yeah. I see your dog from Birmingham? <laughs> yeah. Nigga, I wouldn't have came to see me, bro. Yeah, hey, man. <laughs> I fuck with that, you, bro. Man. I love you, That's I, real. I fuck with you, bro. Man, God damn. damn. Feel like I need to give you gas money. Nah, we good. We good. We good. You, man, appreciate that, man. You smoke one with me or something as we get fan, but yeah. Let's let drink one. I, I, <laughs> okay. I yeah, we drink one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little long. But yeah, so like, um, so I, but I always keep an eye on the city. Like, uh, mm -hmm. me too. It, it was taking a minute for them to break the new A Town artists, and I was just like, and then I heard uh, Lil Huncho. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, they got a new, a new one coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like every Every couple of years, you you be expecting to see who the you know who the mm -hmm. new artists coming out the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I heard, bro, I was like, okay, they got they got another. One. You know okay. what I'm saying? Little homie jam. Good stuff. Good but, stuff. But you know, I just you know, Atlanta is one of the greatest cities in, on earth. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. That. Yeah. Don't believe the bullshit. <laughs> and it <laughs> been, it been good. Fact. It been mm -hmm. good to me through mm -hmm. the years. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like I always always gonna have a special place mm -hmm. in my heart and. Um, I just keep an eye on it, yeah. but I just it, it would be good to see us not copying other people. It right. just say like Chicago, everybody trying to be Chicago right mm -hmm. now, and it just like Real back movement. in the day, it like Atlanta would play a partner. It just like it was, mm -hmm. it was players. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't didn't nobody want to hurt we nobody. Doing, why don't we be doing some Chicago shit? Yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. Done turned yeah. it to Chicago. Yeah, the, young, the youngsters right. is spinning. When you hear them talking about spinning, that's Chicago. So it like it done, it done kind of got a little bit more violent. Oh, that it used. That's I don't miss that yeah, shit. Yeah, it used I, to be I like, like not the uh, media and the mainstream, but like the upcoming, like the high school artists, the yeah. ones oh, that like hey. bubbling hot oh, in the yeah, city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man, them niggas don't count, man. That, that, that nah, shit don't niggas, count. They, they, they got, got, niggas gonna be big niggas. They coming up. Nah, man. That's all I got to listen to. That's not Atlanta, bro. I'm already saying it. I ain't representing Atlanta, man. I ain't claiming that. But but like that that's what I I I want to see them just kind of like. Get in that position again to where the rest of the world be want to be them mm -hmm. instead yeah. of them mm -hmm. yeah. acting like you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. The rest of the world like that's that's the change that I seen in the show now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like the older nigga, we still the same. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the youth kind of following Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? And they kind of got to get out of that. 
Because mm-hmm. Chicago, they on a genocide. That's a whole nother thing. Dangerous. Yeah. Would you ever manage any artists? I would, I would, but you know, managing is kind of like being a therapist. Damn, that I like having yeah. kids, boy. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? No. <laughs> I tell a nigga no every five minutes. Well, I'm telling you, like, I call myself, um, call myself looking out for one of my little cousins. He was rapping, you know, he started getting his little momentum. So I had told him one day, um, I, I had booked the show for him. That it was my show. He, I was just gonna take and let him open up. And I was like, man, we we'll just come up, stay up, you know, stay up at the house, and uh, we'll go do the show later on. Mm-hmm. He wanted to have his entourage. He wanted to have fifteen. Like he fully signed like, well, you and know what? making just money. Sit there when I, you know, what I'm saying, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just hit you up next week. Mm-hmm. But like that's kind of like what it be, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the the youngsters, they don't go by themselves. See, like when I was coming, yeah. Like when I first met John, I will never forget. Um, Mr. Cool, you remember Mr. Cool? Yeah. Had the song Born Threat. Yeah. John just um, introduced me to Mr. Cool and just told me to bring my suitcase and just, I left me old Mr. Cool house for about two weeks by myself. No wow. limit coming through, Mr. Cool, Pimp C. I'm like, God damn. I was by myself, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But, but it, it helped things. me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It mm-hmm. helped me, my social skills. It helped me just. Holding your own. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, see, that's what the kids now they they but you not finna see him by himself. No. Nope. Yeah. You finna see him with fifteen and it be the entourage that get you in the bullshit. Mm. So, yeah. so the entourage yeah. be their personality for real. They exactly. can't just think about themselves. Exactly. Exactly. The entourage, the artist it might be some shit to where he would look the other way or or you and know the it wouldn't be no big deal. Mm-hmm. But the the entourage just gas that shit up. Exactly. And before you know it it's a, a whole other deal. We've yeah. seen that happen too many times. Exactly. So, <clears throat> You know, but you know, it's it's life. One hundred percent, Bohagen man. This is a, this is the, the first, but it ain't gonna be the last time you come here, man. Like I said, I really appreciate you coming over and showing New Jack through the city love, man. Is there anything you want to say to the New Jack through the city audience, man, before we get up out here, my boy? Because I know hey. you got some more famous shit to do. Hey, man, I, I just want to say y'all make sure y'all be, you know follow me on uh, on social media uh, at the real Bohagen. Um, check me out, you know, my new projects. I got the Heroin Wars coming on uh, six episodes. It's coming soon. Uh, we got the independent movie, uh, Post Greed, that we did last year um, that's going to be dropping soon. So um, I'm just working to be on the lookout for that Hagonomics project when it takes time. Okay. There it yeah. is, man. Yeah. Well, like I always say, you just can't say you're really something. You got to be, man, Bo Hagen, man. Y'all give it up one more time. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah, hey. Let's take a picture, boy. Uh, hey.